Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Palumba here. How are you guys doing today? Today I have a special video for you guys. I have recorded some benchmark tests that I've performed on a new hard drive that I've acquired. Disk benchmarking is the operation of running a utility or tool that accurately measures the rate of data transfer under various disk access scenarios. The hard drive I have put under test is the Western Digital Gold 6TB HDD. My main reason for purchasing this was so that I could use it as an external HDD for my new PS5 console, which I have yet to acquire due to the embarrassing launch by Sony. <laughs> I intend to uh, store my entire library of PS4 games on it, at least until I get additional SSD storage for my PS5. Additionally, there are reports that as of right now, external HDDs are causing the PS5 console to brick, so I'm probably going to wait until a software update fixes that. I was able to get this Enterprise Class HDD on Amazon for only $200. As you saw earlier, price has increased a little bit since then. Now in order to use this as an external HDD, of course I had to acquire the appropriate adapter or docking station in my case. I settled on the one you saw earlier from Oracle on Amazon. It was the best looking one I could find that was rated for 10 gigabits per second, which is the speed that most of the USB ports on the PS5 are rated. I wanted to ensure that the HDD itself was the bottleneck and not the docking station. So here we've been going through the data sheet for this gold drive. As you can see, it is available in sizes up to 18 terabytes. Of course, this drive uses the SATA interface and is packaged in the 3.5 inch form factor. This sheet provides the max sustained data transfer rate for this unit at 255 megabytes per second. This is the fastest I could find for a 6 terabyte drive. I looked at a ton of other drives including those from manufacturers such as Seagate and Toshiba for example. When selecting the hard drive, my priority was to get one with enough space for my entire PS4 game library. The second priority was to get the fastest drive possible. The 6 terabyte model that I have has a good cache size. Okay, so in order to provide a quality bench test of this drive on my PC, I felt it necessary to include information regarding what type of processor I'm using. My computer is already well over 9 years old, but it is still running strong. As you can see, I'm using an Intel i7 processor running at at least 2 GHz. It can be boosted, however, to I believe at least 2.8 GHz. If anyone has any suggestions about what type of computer I should build to replace this one, let me know in the comments. Okay, so here we are with uh, a recording of me first connecting the HDD to my PC. I have the Windows Disk Management Utility open here to show how it appears to the computer in its unformatted raw state. Additionally, you can see the unformatted drive does not appear in the uh, File Explorer window. Here I go through the properties of the HDD. As you can see, I have disabled write caching in an attempt to obtain the worst case results when performing the benchmark tests. Uh, the drive is connected to my computer. In just a minute, you'll, you'll get to see it in action. Let's initialize the disk now. I have chosen GPT rather than MBR here because MBR is only compatible with drives up to 2 terabytes in size. If you don't know what this means, uh, I have provided links to articles that explain why I'm selecting the settings shown in this video in the description below, which are worth a, a read. Now let's format the disk. I want to format the entire drive. I want to use XFAT because that is the file system compatible with uh, PS4. However, let me remind you that I am only doing this so that I can perform PC benchmark tests. Uh, if you want to use the drive as extended storage for your PS4 or PS5, that system will format it for you. I'll leave the allocation unit size at the default settings and perform a full format so that I could see if Western Digital sold me an HDD with bad sectors.
and the formatting has begun. Let's now take a look at it in action. Okay, so that full format took about 48 hours to complete. I also had to leave for a weekend trip before it was finished. As you can see, it's, it has been successfully formatted and is in healthy status. Uh, the drive shows 5.45 terabytes of actual size. And additionally, it now appears in the File Explorer window over on the right. As expected, it is empty. For good luck, let's scan it for viruses. Okay, so another important thing that I felt necessary to show you before starting the benchmark test was the type of USB port used to connect the drive to my computer. As you can see here, it is connected to a USB 3.0 port. I believe this is the best type of port available when I first purchased my PC. Now in case you didn't know, I show you the transfer rate for USB 3.0. Because uh, 625 megabytes per second is much larger than 255 megabytes per second, given on our data sheet, we can rest assured knowing that the USB port is not a bottleneck for our testing. Okay, let's now start with our basic tests. This is a neat little utility that I got from Seagate when I previously purchased a new internal HDD back in 2015. First, I performed a drive information test to get a little more information about our drive. Basically, this shows that I do have what the data sheet says I should have. I already have 137 power on hours because I had to leave it on while I was away for the weekend. Now let's start the smart check. The primary function of this test is to detect and report various indicators of drive reliability with the intent of anticipating imminent hardware failures. As expected, this test passes because the drive is brand new. Next up, we got the short drive self-test, a thorough diagnostic routine that is built into the drive's firmware. Of course it passes because the drive is brand new. Finally, we have the short generic test. It's three segments, outer scan, inner scan, and random read. In contrast, the long generic test scans the entire drive from the beginning to end. Uh, this test takes a long time to complete. I had actually started it but canceled it before it finished. I did not include it in this video. I did not think it was necessary to complete. So the short generic test passed successfully. This test was looking for unreadable sectors on the drive. Now let's finally begin the first benchmark test. As you can see there are a lot of variables that can affect the performance of the uh, HDD. The I.O. size specifies the range of I.O. blocks used for reading and writing data to the test file. Uh, 
the transfer speeds are displayed for each size. The file size specifies the total size of the data file that is created on the test drive. And here we have our first test results. I am now going to change the file size to the maximum rather than the minimum to try to get more bounding data. The test pattern specifies the 32-bit data pattern that is written to the data file during testing. Uh, the direct I.O. option causes file I.O. on the test drive to be performed with no system buffering or caching. Again, I am trying to determine the worst case results, so I don't want any data caching. The bypass write cache option causes file writes to the test drive bypass Drive write cache. Otherwise, drive write caching is determined by the drive settings. I honestly don't know what kind of effect this has on the test. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know. I tried testing both ways with very similar results. The QDEF specifies the number of concurrent IOs sent to the test drive or the maximum number of rewrite commands that can be executed at one time. Again, I selected one because I'm trying to get the worst case results. With this file size, you can see the test drive reaches the maximum sustained data transfer rate advertised in the data sheet, approximately. Judging from this data, I believe that the ATTO disk benchmark utility uses sequential read-write testing. So let's move on to a different utility that will also show us data for uh, random read-write testing. So here we are with some crystal disk mark testing. As you can see here, we can perform two types of sequential tests and two types of random tests. I selected the smallest and largest block sizes in each case in an attempt to get bounding results. The first test will use smallest test size provided by Crystal Disk Mark. Nine trials will be performed for each test shown. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how the affinity affects the results. I tried both options with very similar results. Let us know in the comments if you know. The results here show that uh, the results for the sequential tests are similar to the values found previously by the ATTO disk benchmark. Now let's set the test size to the maximum option to provide another set of results. Again, the sequential test results are m more or less similar to the previous data obtained. The random read-write speeds are much lower, but that's expected. As a final but less scientific test, I use a stopwatch to record the speed required to move a 100 gigabyte game from my PS4's internal storage to the extended storage. The extended storage was formatted by the PS4 system in only a few seconds. Now it took about 25 minutes to move Red Dead Redemption 2 to the external drive. However, the 2 terabyte drive internal to my PS4 is only rated for a maximum data transfer rate of 169 megabytes per second. So this test doesn't really give us a good idea of the new drive's performance. Uh, rather, I just included it here for information. But based on the stopwatch measurement, Red Dead Redemption 2 was transferred at a rate of about 71 megabytes per second, which honestly I think is pretty good. This is definitely a fast drive, and I am more or less pleased with it. I only have two complaints. The blue LED on the docking station is very obnoxious in a dark room. I'll probably try to cover it up with some tape in the future. Also, the drive does appear to be very loud in some cases. For some reason, I was only able to have it produce the sound when the drive was performing random read operations. As you saw from the previous video clips, it was mostly quiet during most of the tests. I'm not too worried about this because uh, I game with a headset and I tend to keep the setup hidden in the back of my TV setup. Finally, here we have a summary of the results. I performed these tests more than once offline to ensure that I had not obtained anomalous data results. Anyway, what do you think of these test results? Do you think this was a good hard drive? Was my benchmark testing strategy adequate for you? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will talk to you guys soon.